<clears throat> just kind of changing the subject sure. a bit. Um, how about sort of Japanese historical figures? So remember, some of our viewers maybe they're not so familiar with Japan. Sure. Um, you know, Japanese historical figures or celebrities or authors or artists that you sort of mm. admire and mm. really think wonderful. You know, anyone like that? Yeah. Um, one one that comes to mind. Uh, it's controversial, I think. Uh, Mishima Yukio, the famous novelist who committed uh, seppuku or, or, or self-inflicted suicide in 1970 in the Ichigaya barracks here in Tokyo to sort of counter the quote-unquote westernization of Japan. He was an, sort of an ultra-nationalist. But what I, what I think the reason I, 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 I'm interested in him is because I think he, he saw that Japan's traditional values are challenged by what was happening with you know, greater influence from overseas. And I don't necessarily support the way in which he ended his life and, and, and what his cause was. Mm -hmm. But I do think uh, I'm seeing um, in everyday life here, at least in Tokyo, um, gradual diminishment of core values mm -hmm. of Japanese that are important to maintain Japan as, as a country, to maintain Japan as an institution. But also, I think, when we look at natural resources, Japan doesn't have very many mm -hmm. except for the, its people. Mm -hmm. And if its people lose what I think are really important core values of groupism, um, being considerate of others, um, working loyally within a group, um, being diligent, if they lose that, what do they have? Mm -hmm. you know, I'm from America, so my view is, is pretty narrow. It's just looking at America most of the time. But America has natural resources. We have more than enough food to feed ourselves. We have uh, oil, natural gas, we have coal. Japan has none of that, at least not in large amount of, of, of volume. Uh, we also in the United States have tremendous creativity and innovation. I mean, Lady Gaga was just doing a series of concerts here in Japan in the last week, right? So people are going to see American pop. They're using an Apple, iPhone to take pictures at that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe in the, later in the weekend they're going to see a movie made in the United States yeah. like Avatar. Mm -hmm. That kind of institutional creativity is one of the great strengths of the United States. I think there's creativity here, but I don't think there's enough risk taking for creativity to flourish here. And that's something that has to change. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have to make mistakes in order to grow. Right? We look at the Facebooks of the world, for example. We look at some of the great innovations mm. that have come from the United States. It's because risks were taken. Look at Bill Gates. Mm. He quit Harvard. Similar, you know, similar background to, to Mr. Zuckerberg now from Facebook, right? Mm. But we didn't frown on that. We don't necessarily say you have to go to Harvard to be successful or Stanford. Mm. We, we're more interested in the United States on, okay, what did you learn when you were in school and how are you using it? I think that's really the focus. Mm -hmm. Here in Japan, it's, it's Tokyo University, Kyoto University, Keio University, Waseda University. Those are the top four. If you get in, life's pretty easy for you when you get out. But for me, that doesn't mean much because mm -hmm. what did you learn at Tokyo University and how are you using it in your life and how are you using it to make right. Japan stronger? Maybe I could add Globus University to that list. Yes, it's a so, great idea. But, um, yeah, I well, mean, actually, Globus is interesting. I, I'm mm -hmm. not a member of Globus. I, I don't know it deeply, but I... I do know that, that uh, Mr. Hori saw a vision of where Japan needs to go. Mm -hmm. And I think he's not just doing it to make money here, he's doing it to help Japan. Mm -hmm. He wants to create new generations of leaders, people with international expertise. I'm all for it. Uh, I'm in his camp. Could you, I mean, because you've kind of education background yourself, could you touch a bit about what, what, what's your take on sort of Japanese education system? It's got strengths. Uh, it's got weaknesses. <laughs> You know, I, I'm, I'm not happy that Japanese are not able to move beyond hierarchy mm. and, and take risks again, mm. right? Hierarchy is a very important part of Japanese culture, right? Uh, senpai kohai, subordinate yeah. uh, superior relations. They're very important. They're part and parcel to Japanese history. They shouldn't change. But I think at the same time, you know, you have to be able to communicate on an equal level with people above you mm -hmm. in order to have trust built, in order to have the respect on both sides, mm -hmm. and in order to take risks. Um, you know, what I love about 
the United States is when, when President Obama speaks to somebody, he's the most powerful, technically the most powerful man in the world, right? We could say so. But when he talks to anybody, he's down at their level. Mm. And that's what Americans like. That's what encourages the growth and innovation and creativity. Mm. So I think there has to be a balance between you know, superior subordinate relations and also the ability to take risks. That's, I think, one of the great challenges for Japan. Right. And if you could combine the two, you'd have like a, a hybrid superpower. I think. Hybrid superpower, <laughs> absolutely. David, what, something you love and something you hate about Japan? Well, I love a lot about Japan, as, I, as I've talked about. I, lo I love that it's safe and it's clean. I love that um, uh, Japanese are polite. I love that um, things work here, you know, uh, people are on time. Those are things that don't happen in, in many other parts of the world in the same way. I, I'm not happy, as I told you, about what I see with some of the destruction mm. of core values among mm. some of the people that I see mm. and the, the selfishness that's, that's been created. We could say it's technology that's creating it. We could say it's the influence of Westernization, but I'm not sure about that. Mm. You know, um, that, That's something I, I'm quite concerned about, mm. for sure. And I... Um, I also don't like rush hour, but I think that's the same for everybody, right? Rush hour trains in Japan are not a lot of fun, right. um, particularly in the big cities. Right, right. Yeah, but I mean, I'm here still, right? I've been here for th for three decades. Uh, can I say that I'm going to stay here till I die? I I'm not sure about that. Um, home you know, you know I, home is is the globe. Uh, <laughs> I'm traveling a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm working in. Um, other parts of Asia, I'm working in, in North America, I'm working in the Middle East a lot of the time. The bulk of my time is still here. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the need for what I do is, is even greater here. Um, I'm spending half of my time in business communication courses, you know, helping Japanese to be able to, to do business, as I said, with people from overseas. And I'm spending the other half of my time working with spokespersons at all levels in Japanese and um, international organizations to be able to deliver messages effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, I like my work. Yeah. What's your passion? Well, my passion is my work. Um, <laughs> and I think, um, I, I, I also want to comment that uh, J Japan has been an unbelievable opportunity for me. Right. When I, where I come from the United States, it's always, you know, like if you go to New York and if I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere, the mm -hmm. famous Sinatra song, mm -hmm. which is true. But I think Japan has provided me with many, many more opportunities than I could have had in the United States. I mean, I had my own TV show on NHK for two years. I've published 19 books here. Uh, I've been able to go from actually nothing, zero when I came here in 1982, to being able to make an, a name for myself in my space. And uh, it hasn't been easy, but it's been challenging. You know, it's been challenging in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I can look back um, now pretty proud at what I've been able to do here in Japan mm -hmm. to help Japan, uh, help Japanese, and also, you know, sort of help myself. Any regrets? If you could go back in time and change something? Or change? Not many. Not many. Um, you know, it, it, we're not prisoners. Mm -hmm. if, if you're in your life, if you're doing something in your life that you don't like, you can change it. Mm -hmm. My feeling for many Japanese that I talk to is that they feel that they're prisoners, mm -hmm. right? You join a company at age 22, and you're expected to stay for 40 years until you retire. And mm -hmm. I sometimes look at these people on the train, mm -hmm. and they're sleeping for an hour, hour and a half into the city. They're sleeping an hour, an hour and a half, and they get home at midnight, and then they take a shower and go to bed and get up and do it again. You know, if that's the life you want, mm -hmm. go for it. Mm -hmm. But if that's not the lifestyle you want, then change it. Mm -hmm. You know, you are the master of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the individualism on the side of Japan I'd like to see develop more, mm -hmm. where you take control of what you want to do, you make it the life you want it to be. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not so interested in, in making sure that everybody dresses properly and everyone looks the same way. That's really important to Japan. But I like to s judge a book not by its cover, by mm -hmm. what the content is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, I'm much more interested in, in the Steve Jobs style of dressing, right? T-shirts and jeans. I'm interested in what you can do. Right. I'm interested in if here's a problem, here's an issue, right. can you come up with some solutions? Mm -hmm. Can you think outside the box? Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, I think we need to go mm -hmm. to in terms of the future for Japan. Dave, it's been fantastic talking to you. Last question. Sure. Tips for, I mean, some of our viewers may be actually moving to Japan for their job or coming here on holiday. Yeah. Any tips for, you know, how to get on with Japanese people? Sure. Be patient. <laughs> Uh, every time you, you feel frustration from things not moving fast enough, take a deep breath and take a step back and be patient. Mm -hmm. Take your time, 
and focus on developing relations with all the people in your office. And that means no matter what level you are, president all the way down, going to lunch with people on a regular basis, sometimes in twos and threes, um, making sure that you're on the ground a lot of the time instead of in your office with the door closed. Uh, that's what Japanese respond well to. That's my advice. Fantastic. Good David, seeing you. Being great, great having you here. Thanks it's a very pleasure. Much. Thanks, Adam. And that's it for uh, this uh, episode of Inside Japan. Uh, I'm Adam Kassar from Globis. Catch you next time.